going to be like 28 steps high. Let me take a shot of this glue, guys. I appreciate Please it. Please do. Man. Please do. That's that's great. He is pouring the glue into his mouth. Where it's just flowing. Oh, how does it taste? Hmm. Something. Something. I'm telling you, something about this Max. It's like biting into the side of a piece of IKEA furniture. I mean, it just tastes. I remember this now from a, another video, but that is <laughs> like some good stuff, man. And you, you pay the money for it. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, when you eat stuff that's tastes crazy, like a two by four. Do you? Mm-mm. Well, by the way, real quick, let me, warn, he, let me warn everybody that comes into your channel. I, uh, I've been watching Woody's Gamer Tag for a while. I knew he had a big server on some video game, but I don't know what a server is, and I never played Minecraft. But don't ever attempt anything that I ever do on my channel. If you happen to go over there and watch it, I'm a professional idiot with a side of alcoholism for <laughs> decades. Okay, guys, that's all I had to say. Go ahead, Woody. Uh, that so was that, Taylor. Yeah, go ahead, Taylor. The, the way, if you guys are listening audio only, the way that he ate the glue was the way that someone eats glue. If this is the, you can't even count this. what time this is it's, that you've eaten glue. That's how an eight-year-old eats chocolate sauce. Just bottle, like, three inches above his mouth, head turned up, like, nom, 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 yes. nom, nom. He was drinking it the way that, like, Michael Jordan and Mia Hamm were drinking Gatorade in those commercials from, like, the early 2000s. Just dumping it in there. Not missing any. I don't even know where they get this from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was perfect. He responded to me saying he was a little bit sane by saying, "Oh, you know, whatever." And then he drank some glue. Like it's, oh, I, 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 it's I like a Chris. Was, it's like a Chris Farley kind of Jim Carrey, like Will Ferrell. Do you just? It, it doesn't matter if you're at a a high school prom or whatever. You're the one dipping your head in that punch bowl. You're the one taking everybody's emotions and just ripping them out of their souls and snapping them back. When I say, "Just kidding," I don't know what it is. <laughs> His Do I mind even have doesn't... to wear these? <laughs> if you don't I, want to, you I don't, don't have know to wear how them. you're hearing me. You... Watch this strip. You can oh, see him okay. in here. Let's see. He's eat. Uh, well, no, I'm not gonna... Hold on. In his mouth. So, so, for people listening audio only, he's taking his iPhone pods and he's swallowing them. They're, they're going to go down his throat, it would seem. And, and I'm guessing he'll pull them back up and recover them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going just as planned. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there appears to be. I can't do that with glue in his mouth. mouth. You gotta have a clear path. Uh, what was it you were trying to do? Swallow it? No, I can put an earbud right down here, and I'll show it to you through my esophagus. You gotta get up close. You can see it, and then I pull it back out. And if it just breaks off the end, it just goes down like a tampon losing its string. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all know that. The, um, the, uh, aside from pot, what drugs are you on lately? Uh, just weed, bro. I, I quit the pills. Honest. No opiates, no alcohol. It's just uh-huh. marijuana. Are you feeling a lot better? Like, healthier? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> I'm uh, going, like, just visiting your YouTube channel right now is, it's baffling. <laughs> that that there are so many videos <laughs> uploaded that make no sense and have no use and I am so puzzled. You really are trying to lose subscribers. There's, you really are. You're I thought you were clearly not. You are trying to lose subscribers. It's, it's just a test, guys. <laughs> a little more glue. <laughs> what the fuck? He's eating he's eating a, a, like a several more ounces of glue. <laughs> I got a question for you. With the beard, with the beard though, it's tough. You got to remember, you got a beard now, so you can't leave like hmm, extracts and then go to the store. Yo, I once painted my face all sharpie, did a video, then I ran to Seven Eleven. Indian dude was like, "Oh, see you making YouTube vids again." Sure. Yeah. So, so wait, sometimes when you eat crazy things. I see you like, uh, like, like, like manipulating your throat or esophagus or whatever the shit it is. Are you just playing it up for the camera? Like, like, are you just kind of like hamming it up to make it look like 
I don't know, there's a special technique to it when really you're just drinking? Or... Nah, it's all literally pain and text question. Uh, right. So what did you do in Iraq? Like, you yeah, were in yeah. the Army, well, were you I infantry? I was a 51 kilo, 51 kilo plumber. I was combat engineer, kind of, but they didn't need any plumbers when I got there. But uh-huh. I was with the Bad News Bears group platoon. We just all came out of everywhere together as a group of people that quit the army. So <laughs> they would put us on the back of a five ton and we just headed out into the desert for two days and two nights, sleeping right underneath the stars until they found a unit that wanted you. Well, we pulled up to this unit. Captain opens up the doors. Move them cots over. You said you want another guy. We got one. So they send me in with these two other temps that weren't going to stay there, but they had to sleep overnight. They had to move all their stuff. Now, I'm the only white guy in the tent. I Uh don't care because I'm not prejudiced. But when it came shower time, yeah, men weren't created equal. My nickname was Jimmy Dean Sausage, you know what I mean? Either way, I don't know why I went into small white penis stories, but yeah, I was food supply and I just fed everybody and all the units out on the front lines. They'd send back their five tons, their cooks, boom, 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 make deals with people. When you got the only refrigerated truck in the whole company, sure. yeah, you own shit. <laughs> Next question. Did you I have shot a, a camel? I didn't shoot any humans, thank God. Because uh-huh. how can you be a messiah when you took the soul out of somebody's body? I did shoot a camel because I hit him the day before, but I was going to turn that into like I hit a soldier and he died in my arms and I went back to America to tell his wife and we fell in love. Isn't that a great movie line? I don't know. Why did you kill the, the camel? He was still in misery. We backed over him. He was trying to, they tried to get food out of our lots because we had goat's milk. You could drink it in like 120 degree temperature. Uh, Not me. I stuck to sand. <laughs> was there anything that you ate over there that was new? Like a new weird food or something? Yeah, I, I, everywhere I've been in stages of life, I've entertained, entertained people by eating whatever I can to make them laugh. No money, no internet internet no fame but um i did mres without dipping the stuff in water because it's all like dehydrated so you'd pop like a square of peaches and it would just blow up in your mouth <laughs> you know what i mean so, so you, your income is is youtube money right that that's that's where your your cash comes from youtube wow oh look at woody he's repeating a question uh taylor and fs fps I got uh, yeah. you. Oh, now, yeah. I got, like, YouTube. Uh, we sell T-shirts and hats. I got uh, an annuity for a broken back for the rest of my uh, life. Okay. Um, I do strip a gram sometime. Of course. Hey, baby. Oh, you didn't ask for the young college guy? You asked for Jack Nicholson then. Show me your titties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. A, a stripper that asked the bride to join in. Hey, this, my new <laughs> It's pretty cool, though. It's a uh-huh. condo turned in from an old farmhouse. If I had to jump out my window over here because of a fire, I land right into the yard of a pit bull and a Rottweiler. That sounds bad. Yeah, I'm not, this is only temporary, bro. I'm going to California. Out What's of there? Denver. And a Denver's dead, man. I just got to go west, and I'll land that job. I'll take Flo's job from Progressive. Mm-hmm. I'll be the next All-State guy. You're in good hands with All-State. Uh-huh. And I was also in an old movie like the A-Team. <laughs> so hey, have you ever seen... your dog's on. I'm in an interview here, you know? Jeez. Have you ever seen anything that, that, that you thought, you know, that, that wouldn't be for me? I wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't drink that. Is, is, there, any, do you ever, do you, is there anything out? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't ever play anything up. Nothing's ever fake. But, um, you but can what he's say asking, everything's altered, but I've been What doing... he's asking is, are you doing anything to, like, rub your throat to help things down? Is oh, that a oh, thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I go up with that liquor, all, I know that first shot is, like, but I've done it since I was 15, so as long as I can get it past that throat and esophagus area and down, I'm fine. And just, I don't know, when you're up like this and you push in on here, the esophagus goes like this. Sure. I don't know. It just I, I can do that with anything, man, with water, whatever. It's just you got to go past a certain point, and it's like I'm holding my throat up. And my head just to keep it all, and it just goes down like them sword swallowers. When you drink a bottle of vodka, afterwards, are you sick or just happy and drunk? Um, 
It's more of a just, I know I'm going to bed. I eat good food before it. I put some some words, some <laughs> you just drink a whole bottle of vodka and fall asleep? I put some more. Uh, excuse me, that glue gives you the gas. Um, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> that like, must be the glue. <laughs> I didn't mean it, Burp, bro. Much but glue. yeah, um, what was the question? Did, after you drink a bottle of that vodka. That burp tastes like a carpenter's ass. <laughs> After you drink a bottle of vodka, what, what's going on with you? Like, are, are you sick? Right. Are you sweating? Are you sleepy? Are you happy? Are you sad? I'm fine, usually. Um, there's some aftermath bits. But what it is is that um, I just plan it out. It's not like, you know, that everybody's like, slam this bottle of liquor at this bar. No, I got to. I one time I slammed a bottle of liquor and headed out in public and I got arrested on the beach. I don't right. even know how, but I was yeah. fighting like 30 people. <laughs> so I just go to bed and I really don't even know. Well, you know I just wake up and I just I don't know. I've just got a down really go stomach. What caused it? So, <laughs> all right. so what was the absolute worst one as far when as I got, when I got out of jail jumps. and I walked back to the hotel, my buddy next door to me goes, I knew you were gonna get arrested. I was like, You should have tackled me, dude. <laughs> Next question. I'm sorry, my brothers. <laughs> what was the worst booze one or was, i guess better question was there ever one of the booze slams where you actually thought like this is physically dangerous i have to go th get this taken care of and not me but my friends couldn't wake me up after the devil springs 116 i woke up in the emergency room with a tube down my throat they should have taken me to the va because i got free insurance there so i got hit up with a 600 hundred dollars stump your pumic stump yeah pump, pump your, your stomach, stomach. Bill. yeah yeah yeah, so um, that was the only time I never get where uh, there was one time I thought I was gonna die, the fish sauce slam. I didn't realize all the teaspoons of salt and yeah, literally all like, the sodium. <laughs> people do that sodium. in China to kill themselves. So I'm running around Denver, 16th Street Mall, just Gatorades. I just couldn't get enough. I kept, and I was just like, I, I did an aftermath of it. I'm like, okay, okay, because it felt like everything just got sucked inward. Like I wasn't sweating. Like, <laughs> Going that way to save my You're body. Crying out. You're crying out. <laughs> just I, I, crisping I away. To, I went to spit in the air and it came back like a yo yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You needed a bag of saline. You said once that you don't throw up and that you can't throw up. Is that just something you said or can, is no, that true? I, you can't I throw really up. I really don't have that puke thingy in my. I tried it with so much stuff. I want to try that Ipecac, but no, I don't puke. I've never puked. And my mom never puked either, and she used to drink like a half a gallon of vodka a day and go to Jesus work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a lot. That's where I learned how to slam because I knew she had vodka under the sink. I'd have to slam it real quick while I was doing dishes. What was that noise? Nothing, Mom. I just dropped the Tupperware ball. You know what I mean? We both be sure, drunk. Yeah, we all know know. Know. We've all been there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to smell vodka on somebody's breath when you got it on yours. Yes. That's a t-shirt right there. I'm not proud of my alcoholism, and that's why I'm dropping it out of my um, entertainment career, because YouTube was just a resume, and it's working. I'd love but to go into details about it, but yeah. I was I was around a company with a tractor trailer full of equipment. So call them independent film. I don't care. That's a lot of equipment. I based my movie career on trailers of equipment. Once they're seventeen, you know I'm got Angelina Jolie. She's available now. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> You know why she wants sole custody? Because Brad Pitt likes to do cocaine and Molly and passes out till noon. You know, she can't leave the kids there alone. It's not like he's cheating on her or he's gay. Oh, Hollywood's hooked on cocaine. I can act without it. You want a line of coke? Hell no. <laughs> I'm crazy as it is. Jesus, give me the script. I'm doing the backwards. You know what I mean? Smoke your doing tobacco the backwards, off the screen. <laughs> no, dude, I don't understand, man. Oh, I'm, just, just I'm, I'm ordering these plants over here. I'm <laughs> watching for the neighbors. <laughs> so you yeah, mentioned being arrested. You, you sounded like maybe that wasn't that big of a deal. How many times have you been arrested, and what was the most serious of offenses? All my arrests came from me being drunk. I haven't been ever no arrested. No way! Yeah. But oh. anyways... 
I was a victim of a lot of circumstances. Sure. It's hard to believe, but yeah. I've literally tried to break up a fight and was almost beaten to death by a police department. Um, it's The just whole department! Like, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say Get a commissioner, get a election. <laughs> but either way, we called their police department Little Shop of Horrors. They were brutal back in the early 90s. But um, what was your question again, sir? Uh, how many times have you been arrested? And Oh, most- yeah. Um, probably, like, I'd say 12. <laughs> 12 Sad times. to say. Well, um, one was for marijuana possession as a teenager. One was for breaking into my dad's house after he threw me out and having a house party, but he dropped the charges. Um, then I fought with the police a lot. Um, that was four or five times. And then I broke battles out. Battles with the law enforcement you know, <laughs> I was a hero to that city. I broke up uh-huh. a bad um, prostitution sting where undercover cops were going right up to cars and presenting themselves, and then they would arrest them. And I was like, that's entrapment. I got to stop this on my 10 hydrocodones. Bum, <laughs> so then they beat me up there, and this dude pulled my ID out, and he goes, ho, 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 guess who we got here? Mr. Chris Shuey. I remember dragging him through an alley 14 years ago. And then I went on a spiel how they sent away an innocent man for six, six years to cover up the whole incident. But either way, some people don't want me alive. Come get some. Nah, so, so maybe they'll make another one of those making a murderer documentaries about you. It sounds like there's all kinds of strings to be told. Uh, I'm the next ads. Forrest Gump, bro. My, my next movie will be Forrest Gump. When I hit that million <laughs> subscribers mark after 15 more years, and I'm that angry grandpa, but I've like literally like saved certain, you know, portions of Africa. It's gonna get epic, man. Which people which just laugh portions, at me now? But you which don't areas know. of Africa do you think are the most uh, in need? Uh, we got to definitely hit the West Coast in because we got to take care of all the terrorism before we can actually bring ships of food in because they're just going to try and control it. Uh-uh. So step one, book so up, step book one up. Is oh more. gosh, you nice is here. I'm gonna be like this with my fucking like, over here. Put the corn over there, man. Put the corn over there. Not your first corn. time. Yeah. Why are you uploading right, so many out, videos man. right now? I'm just looking at your channel. You're uploading 30 second and one minute videos, and, and they're all like three hours ago, three hours hey, ago, three hours let ago. Let me five. give you my sign in info right now when you guys upload a video, me talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of your videos is Shoe Nice Nursery Rhymes Remix. <laughs> Did you like them, right? It's like, you know, Hickory Dickory Doc, every bitch wants my cock. I don't know. <laughs> I was giving shout outs to Andrew Dice Clay. He's one of my heroes. He would tear up an audience like Don Rickles and just walk away with everybody pissed. I love that shit. Deal there's, with it. You came to a comedy show. There's a four second video titled yeah, Good Night. Sparky, 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 Sparky. Come here. You want a little treat? Come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Is he giving his dog tobacco? No, yep, that's what he's doing. He's he's giving himself some tobacco, <laughs> or, or maybe he is giving. I don't I don't know what the fuck's going on. Over uh, I, I ain't got the time, but you know, hurry up, shoe nice, hurry up. I mean, is that, he just is that always leaves me at this point in time? That is is that a Trump mask? <laughs> um, hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second here. <laughs> Can anybody tell I'm dating a chick at a Halloween costume store? <laughs> <laughs> this one is freaky, though, man. That's, I scared one... the shit out of people. But let's get right into it. We got Shoe Nice here. We, we uh... got fucking Shoe Nice on the show. Yeah, man. How are we you, got man? The bad man. Hey, hey, hey guys. <laughs> no, huh? Known globally as just the consumer of, of refuse and the guzzler of, of alcohol. Like, just. I've seen you on all kinds of like um, like clip shows and uh, on TV and uh, and on like you know articles around the the internet and uh, we watched the Vice documentary about you recently. Um, tell us what it's like to to be you. Well, basically, I've been an entertainer all my life. Um, I've been eating crazy stuff since I was like five. These dudes brought one of their mom's brand new tampons out into the yard. 
and they like to dip them in water and they'd open up like umbrellas yeah and i just was i said give me that i'll eat it and i thought it was just like some kind of a rolled up thing from a first aid kit no. even, i think i was sick so i ate it but it was dry and i didn't realize that tampons open up in your throat like an umbrella so I'm choking in the yard, like string hanging out of my mouth. The kids, even the bullies were scared, so I knew I must have been screwed up. My mom came out, yanked the tampon out of my mouth, <laughs> smacked me in the butt, and the rest is history. I mean, through elementary, high school, always being sent to the office. I used to stand up against the cafeteria wall, let people dip their old napkins in from their lunch trays and their milks, and throw them at me like giant <laughs> spitballs, and I try and catch them in my mouth. So <laughs> I gotta the ask: your right. aides would just sit there. Are you kidding me? That's horrible. I was always at the special table, but I wasn't really special. They always wondered well, why I didn't blink much. You know what I mean? I blink maybe once every 30 minutes. So. Yeah, like that kid on Deliverance <laughs> playing the guitar. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I came into this roofing world, and it sucked, but I was in the roofing industry for 20 years. and Oh, that's the chopped. worst. Wait, can I ask you? I want to ask you oh, about yeah. that. And I, hey, Let's rewind a little bit. I want to talk about right, when, you're, when you first start eating the awful things in school. Now, I've heard someone say that that was pica, you know, when you've, you're compelled to eat objects. But as Taylor pointed out to me the other day, I think that's usually like, ah, oh, I want to eat dirt. I want to eat like just anything, yeah. anything like you can put your hands on you want to consume. So yeah, it absolutely. wasn't that, was it? it? It was more about getting attention, getting friends. Well, exactly. Not friends because I was just a good looking guy and a class clown. Usually class clowns are goofy looking. Yeah. So, I mean, it just like I had all the jocks, the burnouts, the women. I mean, everybody, the teachers were hitting on me. So basically, um, pica, they got me confused with that disease. But I do agree with the word pica. P-I-C-A, paid in cash always. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I used to tell the counselors. They were just always so you, looking at me. Just, and it's, they'd be like, all these doctors would be like, um, we're really not sure we can do anything here. Your mom's waiting out in the car. You know what I mean? So the first time you ate something that wasn't food was the tampon. And the way you describe it was... Like you were choking on the ground and people were concerned for you. Like when you when that was over and she pulled the tampon by the string out of your mouth, were you still like fearful or were you kind of you got like a rush? Like I can't wait to eat glue and sticks and little yeah. rocks I find on the road. Yeah, because when I was like three and a half, four years old, I found a pack of my father's non-filtered Camel cigarettes, and um, I ate that whole pack and I turned blue. I mean, like. It was a story that was always in the Butts family. I don't remember. So I think I just, my, I don't know, my mouth crazed. I mean, because I don't mind glue. And I'd like to take this moment out to do a little sponsorship from my buddies at PKA <laughs> who sent me money to get my own drink during this interview. And I chose <laughs> the Max. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Elmer's makes the tastiest of glues, and, I've, I've heard, so... That was yep. a good pick. I feel like we didn't introduce. We assume that everyone knew who Shoe Knight yeah. Twenty Two is. If people don't know, he has hundreds, if not thousands, of videos on YouTube. Shoe Knight Twenty Two, and he eats things that you would think would kill people. Uh, he, it includes drinking. Uh, is it a liter? What does vodka come in? Like the big thing? It's oh, like a fifth. fifty milliliter. Where you're my usual slams, but three quarters uh, of a liter. Three quarters I've done of a two liter. Two half gallons of slam. vodka. He drinks wood glue. He eats things the, yeah it, the, it's important as to what Woody's saying this isn't like an eating channel where it's oh i'm gonna eat a bunch of burgers or look at how many hot dogs i can eat it's actual poison <laughs> it's actual poison Formula 409 eats. didn't you drink it's that? Like that scene at the end of princess bride he's always preparing for a showdown like that where he's been preparing <laughs> by eating poison for years it, it's one of those channels that like yeah. you show to a friend and you're like you won't believe what this guy does he eats a whole thing of cock and they're like no he doesn't and then they watch it and then they're like okay well what else does he eat and then yeah. you just go through the whole catalog. So you brought up the I caulk. I'm, 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 I don't think caulk digests. So right, please tell you... us what happens after you eat the caulk. Do you have 
Well, let's do a little history on eating cock. <laughs> okay. Got to say that carefully. Um, yeah, so I would always, like, as a roofer, you'd always have to do some... But I'd never eat the silicone. That would go on my pants, and, you know, it hardens up, whatever. But latex, something about it. When it, I, I used to wipe it to make it smooth on a gutter edge, something in construction, and I'd just lick it. And all these people are like, that wasn't real. I mean, you have to poke the, no, you don't have to poke the cheap tubes. And any painter knows when you got to get something done, you don't have a lot of money. They got the cheap ones. I heated it up in the microwave. So it came out like frosting. And uh -huh. it's just latex, bro. I mean, it goes through your system easier you know, than an eraser. Takes all the nutrients out. That's, that's yeah. not good. I, I don't microwave anything now after I learned that. <laughs> but, but wait, so that actually answers the question. In my head, this thing stays as caulk and when you poop you probably have an uh, all white poop on the other side like i imagine it like a long like like Oil. butthole like circumference just cube. take a candy bar and put it on your um glove and you take it out of the toilet it's a, it's a silicone rope that you could just <laughs> coil up and sit around your plunger and just add more to it every day until Eventually, you melt it back down and reconsume it. I guess for a but real big stunt, I, like a giant tapeworm. I, I really want to know the answer. When yeah. the caulk goes through, like a giant is it tapeworm? Right. Is it still caulk on the back end? No, ninety-eight point six is your body temperature. Uh -huh. It's going through stomach acid. I mean, they should make bulletproof vests out of corn kernels because that's the only thing recognizable in my shoe. shoe. No, no, I don't know if we can. Swear. That works. Yeah, yeah we, no, we, we, we don't use bad words on this yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we use a <laughs> lot of bad <laughs> words on this show. Food, but it was the whole thing. Aside from corn, I know you said it was only corn, but what are the other things that you catch on the back end? Like you eat. Uh, current, uh, like oh, anything wax. Like if I mm -hmm. slam liquid wax, it immediately turns hard and then you got that's what one trick of that is somebody almost choked to death i said don't try that i'm a professional idiot with decades of experience Crayons. i mean i you just i i the, anything wax comes out and you can see it like crayons la beast showed a picture of his crayons after they you know but i don't like posting videos of feces Oh. <laughs> That's why I quit. I quit Live Leak because I couldn't go to that website and look at all that death and destruction. I'm all about feeding the homeless. You guys gave me $25 for a bottle of wine or scotch. I bought glue, seen a Mexican old man broken down on the side of the road. I said, well, you need gas. He couldn't understand. So I went over to his gas tanks to jump in. We went over to the place. He took his can, got some gas, went inside, came back. He had Doritos, a six-pack of beer, some Slim Jims. I said, <laughs> Did you get any gas? He's like, yeah. The thing was like a quarter full. We went back. He didn't even have enough gas to get it into the line. So I was like, all right, bro, I'm out of here. But Woody's gamer tag helped you out today. See, I'm glad we didn't give him the hundred dollars, Woody. You were right. If we give him the hundred dollars, he'd have been he'd have been in the ghetto somewhere, filling everybody's tank up, and getting everybody clean. Yeah. Can't and have that. I'm bad. Dad, I'm bad no. with money. I'm bad with money when I'm with the home. I turn around to throw money at the homeless. Um, I do this one thing with this one lady. She's old and haggard, but I do the $2 crumpled up over my thing, and she catches it in the wind on the corner every, you know, time. maybe once a week I see her, but it's so funny, and people honk and they cheer when she catches it. Kyle, they don't even know what the hell's going on. But when's they the last time you gave something to the homeless, Kyle? Uh, I, I gave a guy, like, I guess maybe like a year and a half, two years ago, I, there was one like at the at the red light. I gave him the ones that I keep in. Oh, mind. you're a brother but, in my book, dude. One time, I mean, there's millions that'll never do it. I mean, that's the Taylor. Last time. Um, probably the ones that I would pass after like a Blues game in downtown St. Louis. I wouldn't <laughs> stop because when I was a little kid, I my dad gave me like a dollar to go give to one of them, and when I did, they like snatched my arm real quick and it freaked me out but uh i gave like five dollars i usually give money one out of like eight nine times at those little corners where like as long as i'm not way back because i feel like a dick if like you're way like 10 cars back and they're on the corner and you roll it down wave a dollar at them and they have to sprint over like <laughs> desperate for it i feel like i'm kind of an asshole but i yeah, saw probably like a year you... year and a half ago I, I witnessed Woody giving a, a, a homeless gentleman a twenty one time, and uh, but I thought that was that guy was a bit of a scam artist. He like had like a he had he, a like, giant I hand. Yeah. I don't know how he did that. He's like oh, I, I gotta go to Denver, the doctor. I've been in the, uh, sorry, no. I, but I've been in the Denver homeless scene for like three years. But me and my brother, we've been helping out the homeless since we were teenagers. Our mom just instilled it in us, but. 
in Denver, I knew who was just spending it on meth, and they get all mad when I give them tacos. They were like, where's the dollar bill? And when I was in my drinking days until New Year's Eve, we would sit there, and I'd get everybody drunk, high, and whatever, and, you know, I controlled what they did, you know, like 20, 30 of them for a year. They called me the most famous not, not homeless guy in Denver because they knew the truth. But So you had a band of homeless people. Oh, without a doubt. I go down to the line at 12, 12 p.m. I got, you know, I got people in high places. I went to rehab. I learned how to trip on acid and mushrooms. You know what I mean? Thank you. I feel like we really skipped over the part where you were in the mental institution. And I wanted yeah, to know, I'd like that to go the, back to that. Yeah, we should really not gloss over your stay at a, at a mental institution. Now, was that is that the only time you've been in a mental health facility? Yeah, it was. I was one flew over the shoe shoes nest. It's a good movie. It's very sad. I only well, watched it once. I was hooked on all these pills, and I was running through cornfields on my property. And finally, she just called this ambulance and police, and they're like, we're going to take you somewhere to sleep tonight. And I'm just like, no problem. But I was doing stand-up comedy in the police car, and they, she turned on the radio, and the whole well, unit. Well, sit-down comedy. Well, we, get to the, um, we get to the institute, and I'm doing stand-up comedy. I'm waving at the cameras. This is all high on pills. The next day said, we're going to keep you for about a week and you're going to take this. So when I took that, I went crazy and kicked the door out and I ran around this baseball field like, um, I don't know, Field of Dreams or something. All, and this lawnmower guy started chasing me <laughs> and they brought me back up and they knew they screwed up. And eventually near the end, I was actually doing N.A. meetings while the teacher was late. And they were just like, this dude ain't crazy. He's a genius. Get him out of here, man. Get somebody that's really crazy in here. So that's basically all. It was only two weeks, and yeah, it was just. What did you do trip, during bro. those two weeks? Like, did they just sort of sobered you up? Like, did you attend classes, group therapy? Like, what is it uh, like to live there? Mar once they mark you in, and your wife's in agreement, they can keep you for an automatic ten days where nothing changes. You go to meetings. They try to rebuild your life. It's mostly suicide people in this unit I was in. I had no idea why I was there. I was telling everybody that suicide's for pussies. And if you, you try it again and it works, you're not going to heaven because you're not on your life's path. And they're like, we got to get this guy out of here. <laughs> Man, that's not a very productive guy to have in the suicide meeting. <laughs> you're all a bunch of yeah. pussies! <laughs> <laughs> Just kill yourself. You won't do it. Go ahead and do it. Prove me wrong. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've taken a lot of people up. I don't know what it is, if they're lying or not, but people come in. When I used to have Facebook, I was like, Dr. Phil in the messages. Hey, man, I was in a dark place. I was going to kill myself. I found your YouTube videos. I'm back at college. I'm back getting along with my boss. Parents come in. Wow, you just changed our kids. They do it the shoe nice way now. And it's just like, you're <laughs> What does that mean? What, what is the shoe nice way? Like, like, if you had to attach a slogan to yourself, what is it? All or nothing? Like, like what is the shoe nice way? Saving souls, smoking bowls, and crushing trolls. What's my life motto? I smoke and marijuana for my Crohn's disease. I've gone practically homeless feeding the homeless, and I just love the troll mofo that just gets so uptight over words on an internet website. <laughs> There's lots Some, of them out there. If someone Every out there time I go to suicidal. sleep at night, I'm sorry, bro. If someone out there is feeling suicidal and or just down on themselves and they need a little bit of shoe nice, what video do you think is the most inspirational that would put them on the path that you've made? Probably um, Earthworm Chubby Bunny. <laughs> you don't laugh at that. You might as well get the news tight. I didn't mean that. Stop it. Either way, sometimes my split personality likes to sneak out. But, yeah, um, um, I just I tell people, yo, if you kill yourself, you're a little bitch, and I'm going to slap your mom's ass at the funeral. And they're like, wow, he responded to me. Oh my. But then you save somebody's life and they become annoying, you know? They just never. It's like somebody you pull out of a fire. I mean, they just never. Then they cling. Yeah. Okay, okay, enough with the Hallmark cards, you know what I mean? Just say it to me. It means more. Sorry. Didn't give me so, any views. So you're not drinking right now. So that, nah. that's interesting to me because we were talking about, like, oh, we should have him do, like, a liquor slam on the show. And then Chiz was like, no, he's not drinking right now. And I was like, oh, so he swore off liquor? He's like, oh, no, no, no. 
just for now. Like, <laughs> like at New Year's or Christmas, you, correct me, well, whichever you're going to. Yeah, New Year's next Eve. I, I'm New Year's Eve, I might do a slam. I'm really on a Shakeology diet. I meet a trainer from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. my time. Because they all have real jobs too, but they train in Muay Thai, and you know, I'm just trying to learn. Not, I'm a badass mofo. Sure. I'm going to tell you, everybody, right now, I was just born a badass. You can take all the classes you want, have all the belts hanging on the wall. I can't. I can't. I mean, I've had so many dudes kick me in the face, and I'm like Nike, Adidas, or Reebok. Give me that thing, you know, and just show them that seven years ain't shit. Four a.m. outside of a bar, but I was never a fighter. People always just wanted to test me because all the women were hanging around me. I could break dance as a white guy, so at four a.m., like I'd be jumped by like seven, eight dudes, and I couldn't get away from it. Then the cops would show up. I'd be like, chill. I'd be fighting the cops, but you never knocked me out. My great-grandfather was semi-pro boxer. My grandfather was. My father had the Muhammad Ali speed bag. I did that at... I was doing... <laughs> my grandpa was a professional boxer. My dad had a speed bag. <laughs> <laughs> so had, that no, family, that lineage speed really speed broke boxer. apart. And, then, and now I eat glue on the internet. <laughs> But I'm taking no. That's what I mean. I gotta. I, I'm training now, and people don't realize that uh -huh. I'm combining my strength and my heart, and now it's a little bit of skill. But once that freight train gets into that cage, and with these jackhammers, it's just over. I don't care who you are, what you're doing. I'm gonna be in the UFC by 50, and you guys are gonna be in the front row, VIP. I'll go. I'll go. Please, I will gladly watch you in the I, UFC. Um, I watched you in Bellator. Happen, I, I wanted to do this since I was 21 mm -hmm. when UFC started and um, when, you know, Hoist Gracie would fight four guys in one night and break all their arms when they're tapping out for five minutes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He didn't let go. So you guys just want to remember this statement. Mm -hmm. Woody, Taylor, and I can't see this dude's name because my face is blocking, but I'm going to call him Kyle? Some kind of three letters. <laughs> IPS. FPS. Yeah. FPS. Oh, yeah, it's right there. But I didn't cheat. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you guys will be there, man. I appreciate this um, promotional thing because I'm trying to get, I'm doing a, a promotion with Joey's World Tour. I'm actually moving to LA in like three weeks. There's this guy that's just like, dude. You know how many commercials I could have put you in? You could have been the new progressive insurance spokesperson because <laughs> we're getting rid of Flo's ass, you know? Yeah. So I'm dead yeah, in I there. can see you in that I'm job. You card. can replace I, I, You know, I, I came here for some reasons. My son's going to be 18. He can do what he wants. We'll meet out in L.A. So you, and we'll just, you know, as an, as an, 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 on Venice Beach. As an award-winning dancer, your breakdance claims really caught my attention. Can you still breakdance? Yeah, I can do certain things. Show I mean, me something. I'm in, I'm in a controlled area, man, uh -huh. but I can always, you know, just hit the hat over. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Break it down from a seated position. You know? I, who wants me to come out of the garden house? You know you what do? I mean? Where's that doorknob? <laughs> Take oh, it. Here it is. Here it is. It's yours. Shaw, <laughs> oh, you broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was... They call me White Lightning. I uh -huh. mean, yeah. Eighth grade, I did LL Cool J. Do you know my friend yes. Sexy Vanilla Freshness? Sexy Vanilla Freshness. She related to Vanilla Ice? It was a dude. Because right now I'm being sued from Vanilla Nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm being sued from Vanilla Ice for saying Vanilla Nice. You know the Kardashians have me banned from Twitter? Yep. I'm not on Twitter anymore, guys. Sorry. Wait, how'd you get blamed from Twitter because of the Kardashians? Give us that. that well, tale. this this goes back to me eating Kim K's the JJ off the cover of a magazine, and it got like a hundred thousand views. So they must just have been going through <laughs> YouTube, and it came up. So she tweeted to me. This is before Kanye. She tweeted to me, "Oh my God!" Or they were just dating. She goes, "This guy on YouTube with these really blue eyes just ate me off of a magazine." Weird. And I didn't even know these dudes were like, yo, Kim Kardashian just said something about Twitter by you. So I went on and um, I didn't even have a Twitter account, but I found the tweet. And I said, oh, shit, that's me. What's up? Black, white, black, white. It's my turn, right? So she blocked me, but they continued to block me. <laughs> And then I got an email from something in the Kardashian. I thought it was like some kind of a troll email I get all the time. And, uh, yeah, it was actually Kardashians saying that they wanted me to take down every video talking about Kim K's with JJ. 
So I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to be sued and it would be all over E News and everything, but that's what I'm hoping for. You know, you're a nice guy and I'm just having a podcast with you, but I troll the big timers just so they'll shout me out like that Leafy is here, dude. You uh -huh. ever hear? Him? I saw you trolling him recently. I mean, he's blowing up. He's just a little nerd. He's got all the emo chicks, you know? So, of course, he's going to get about 2 million views overnight just going, well, it's one. <laughs> Come on. I got to eat a tampon dipped in Days Insanity sauce. I can't even pull 20,000 views. It's all politics. YouTube knows exactly what they're doing. They're punishing me because I went to another network, went back with Google. You know what I mean? Now I'm back and things are looking better. If I weren't getting their slice of the nice pie. What's up, bro? They weren't getting their slice of the shoe nice pie. You cut them out. Yeah, but I got things coming down the road, something similar to this, but I'm just going to be talking to my... I won't be in a group. I'll just be doing my own podcast talking to my fans. Mm -hmm. I wanna There's going to be a time where people are going to go to my YouTube and they're going to turn it on, and it might not be there. It might be five years down the road, but... Yeah, I'm going to do it. Get I you know you, you get some haters sorry, on... I'm yelling at Google. He's in here again. What's up, bro? I know you get some haters on your videos now, but I remember when you first started uploading, and every single comment, it was overwhelmingly positive. Everybody thought it was hilarious. And for no reason, in every one of your episodes, you'd do something where you're like, and this one's for all the haters out there. <laughs> and you just addressed a big, fictitious group of phantoms at the time. <laughs> there were no haters. It was like... 50,000 likes, 60 dislikes, and you're like, and you can tell me to fuck off as much as you want, but I'm not stopping. And it was like, why did you why did you do that? And then just invite so many people just for the um, fuck of it, to be funny? I, I just, I was born with that, to tell Johnny one thing and tell Freddie another, so they'll fight on the playground, and I'll just be on a swing going, ha, ha. But I don't know, it just... Yeah, it's a it's almost like just being a prankster. It's the prankster in people. Some people in life just don't care, but some people just love to get that bucket of water to dip on their buddy's head. And I think I took that with the videos and trolls. I used to just make videos. Uh, you got to pay me five dollars to be a friend of mine on Facebook, and I really didn't need it. But I knew haters would take them videos. And I formed hate on purpose because hate versus good, you know, it brings conflict and conflict brings change. And I'm going to change the world through a YouTube community. So all my little haters, they'll be kneeling along the other masses when I become the next messiah. <laughs> uh, dude, Man. was the first hour of this show really good or really bad? I don't know. <laughs> We've Look, talked about having a whack pack for years. I don't think he's whack pack material um, because to be a whack packer. So, so here, this is a discussion they have on the Stern show all the time about who is in the whack pack. They, they, they stop and like classify it and like, well, this guy, but not that guy. So for one thing, they can't have a job or a regular source of income that they can kind of keep up with. Like if they're able to like follow a schedule and show up and work for a boss, they can't be in the whack pack. It's, it's usually good if they're not really – I know he kind of fits that profile. It's usually good if they're not really even aware of where they are in the world. Like they're just kind of in their own little world. Two for they're two. Not... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so far That's we're back to a thousand. It's also good if there's some sort of a freak. You know, they've got some sort of weird thing about them. Like they, they fart continuously or they queef <laughs> or they like be vomited yeah. on or they eat glue. So there's that. But there's then there's the other thing. There's the attention-seeking bit of him. Yeah, I think he would classify for maybe the stern whack pack. Like, he's not much different than, like, a high-pitched Eric, I guess. He's, 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 I guess so. I don't know. I don't think he's, I think he's putting on an act, though. Because I think high-pitched Eric on the stern show is putting on an act. I don't think there's any, I don't think he's, like, retarded or, I mean, he's definitely off. He's peculiar. But... He's not as crazy as he's putting himself out there as. He yeah, asked me a... if I'm always like this. And in my head, I'm like, motherfucker, that's the question I ask you. Like, I, I, is he always like this? He, he was whack packing on. Like, Some of the most smartest people um, would agree with him. Would he? Yeah. Well, that's irrefutable. And they wouldn't take kindly to any of your idiocisms. <laughs> not, not one of those idiocisms. Good yeah, that Lord. was fun. I'm glad we had him on. I've been wanting to talk to that guy in some way for years. Uh, like I was with I was with Harley in L.A. Like maybe a, I don't know how much longer after he'd had that phone call with Shoe Nice, and it's interesting to hear both of their versions of that phone call. Um, but I just I remember like 
Hardy's genuine opinion of that guy is that he's too crazy to work with. Because um, that's what he like told me in a back alley in Los Angeles while I was trying to vomit up the drinks that I had consumed for his stupid fucking show. <laughs> he, he was like, yeah, yeah, he's really crazy. Don't deal with him. But, but that was fun. God, his, How his... bizarre was it when he broke out the Trump mask? What? When when, when Shoe Nice put the Donald Trump mask on. Oh, oh yeah, oh. that was that I was a very Trump bad Trump mask. Trump mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, I'm still I, not over that. There was a point during that where I just cracked completely up and just had tears. Uh, that that was pretty funny. I thought. I don't know. Like like you asked earlier. I, I, I guess I'm kind of switching around here. But you asked earlier. Was that first hour good or not? I don't know if it's good. I don't know what it is to the fans, to the to the listeners, viewers, or whatever. But to me, that was one of the most fun hours of PK we've ever done. Like for me, I I really enjoyed every bit of that. Listening to to all yeah. of his madness and, and that was fun for me so so maybe that translated to a, a fun uh show for the viewers it's probably like the hour and a half ish segment that i've talked the least in my time on pk and i was very entertained because anytime like i wanted to say something it was like no why why cut into this guy's time like let's see what what's fucking happening here like, yeah, you just try to slow him down every now and then because he'll start in Iraq and he'll end up getting, you know, like like to yesterday. And you're like, whoa, 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 we got to yesterday. Like, let's go back to Iraq. Yeah, just over being in an insane asylum like that was going out for coffee. <laughs> and we didn't, even, we didn't even ask more about why he was in some sort of special unit in the Army for people who wanted to quit or something like that. He was in some sort of like like unit in the army of like people that nobody wanted because they didn't want to do their duty or something. And he got he was a cook and... Ah, oh, man. Yeah, that's I, part... I... So ahead. much more. There's just so that's, much more there. That's part of what makes me think that he's not totally crazy, and he's actually pretty clever, is he uses the whole, I have a short attention span, this, that, and the other thing, to, if there is a question that he doesn't want to answer, will give you a cursory little no yeah, goof around response, and then before you know it, it's like, ah, we asked about an insane asylum, and he's talking about giving corn to kids in Ghana, and giving them a, their own YouTube channel? What? What are we? What? What are we talking? I really, about? I, I really liked the part where he said that. Oh, what was it? I just lost. Where he was going to be a was. UFC fighter. He said. No, 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 no. it was when country. you asked him um, about what he said in Vice about his uh, wife kicking him out because of the yeah. fame, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Oh yeah, I lied to them. She kicked me out because of my pill addiction." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's great. That's perfect. That's. It was so just stone cold well, honest. It's just so honest and so quick. Ah, oh, no, that was bullshit. I got kicked because of my pill addiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like you beat it, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I, I I really hope he's doing well, though, because it's clear that he really has a lighthearted kind of a look at his, what he's, I don't remember, maybe he just, just said alcoholism. I don't know if he had like a funny pun for it, but it seems, if he really is struggling with that, I hope that he continues to do well, because that would really suck on the show i see see like originally my idea was like we we're you know trying to figure out how to how to use shoe nice what to do with him with the limited time we had with him and it's etc and i was thinking like why don't we have him start out by just drinking that bottle of booze like like kill an entire bottle of vodka or something and then we go from there and you know you know he's just getting drunker and I drunker thought that was a good idea because i was afraid he would be too sane and normal on the show it turns out that wasn't an issue <laughs> Saint me and manic. Yeah, I was um, like, we need to get him, um, like, get a bottle of vodka in there so that we have in it like a crazy person on the show. No, he he comes that way stock. There's no modification well, he was needed. Getting, well, he was getting high the whole time. I mean, you know, it's but, it's not like he came to a sober. Pot yeah. didn't do that to him. Oh, that was tobacco, no, by that, the way. That'd be some really strong pot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If he was, oh, yeah. but oh, when, he, when he leaned over to call Sparky, that was fucking hilarious, though. <laughs> And what he was like, is he giving his dog marijuana? Is he giving his dog tobacco? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. No, he's just calling his lighter Sparky and, and smoking. <laughs> oh, right, his lighter Sparky. I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> I, think it's good. Um, I, um, I, I like his hate for, for Harley, which seems completely unfounded. No. Um, yes. <laughs> like, like, he, he, he was like, oh, let me explain to you why Harley's a bastard. And he's like, I talked to him on the phone once. Cocksucker! <laughs> and it's like, yeah, uh, w wait, what happened? You talked to him on the phone, and now he's a cocksucker. What happened in the middle? Oh, he said something about me and my woman. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't think he did at all. I think you're just a <laughs> crazy person. You're a crazy person, aren't you? The, so that the was little... 
I, I don't, go ahead. I, don't, I, I feel like I don't want to hurt his feelings. Like, I don't want to call him a crazy person. He might you be called him homeless to his face. What are you talking yeah, well, about? Okay, he is, I said he was like well, a he homeless kind of person. He's like a poor homeless person yourself. A crazy homeless person yourself. So how can you really help anybody? And I was, I was like, oh, that no, cuts no, no, a little no. deep. If you looked was, at the way he responded, if you looked at the way he responded to that, uh, he was clearly, like when we had the little conversation about how crazy he was, you could tell he was really enjoying that. He was enjoying talking about that because he was reveling in the fact that he has not only pulled the wool over our eyes, but the wool over the eyes of all of YouTube. He is quite possibly the best troll on YouTube. He's typing to us right now. He's still in the chat. Nobody removed him. <laughs> <laughs> he is typing to us right now. He, uh, to us. he can't we, hear us, I don't think. No. I don't think. I, I hope not, or he's just sitting there listening to us. Christopher is typing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, sorry I had to split, That's and sorry split. I tried to fit my whole life in one interview. That's what he wrote. That's okay. Yeah, That's no, all right. it's cool, bro. Yeah, 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 we this. really enjoyed having him on. But yeah. I don't know why I'm talking like he can hear me right now. No worries. But, had a great time. Hit us up when you want to do a drinking episode. Oh my gosh, you're a bad person. <laughs> we were having an idea of if he did like, I don't know, if he thought he could drink like a 30 pack in four hours, that me, oh you, my. and Kyle would have to team up and out drink him. P team PKA against Shoe Nice at beer drinking. Like, like we get each what of us. What did I type there? Point. Three versus one drinking contest. Bring it, bitch. <laughs> Sweet. I am even most funnier drinking. <laughs> I am even most funnier drinking, says the word Smith himself. And then he corrected his spelling of funnier to funnier. -er. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's <laughs> just jokesters. Like, 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 he, really he, just enjoyed, he really enjoyed us talking about how crazy he was because that's like a solidification of the fact that he's like, nobody knows what is up with me. People out there adamantly think I'm crazy. People out there think that this is all an act and he's somewhere in the ether between I, those two. He, no one can pin him down. It's just like I said when he was here. I, I, I feel like he's just like a homeless person that I might cross on the street who says something about the world ending in 10 years and how he belongs in the UFC. Gotta feed the Africans, and, bro! Yeah, Get and, the hunger! And I just like throw Country a dollar and run in the other direction, you know, as a way to like separate and create distance. The he, cat's in the crater of a silver spoon! He's like that, except that he can perform this stunt that gets him YouTube money, enough of it that he can buy a condo in Denver. Like, if, if, if he couldn't eat Elmer's glue, he'd just be on a street corner babbling nonsense, right? He said he was in roofing for 20 years, so he can clearly hold down a job. He said a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, good point. Yeah. <laughs> he said that, like, he... he oh, man! He's good at this. This, <laughs> this is hard. He's he's doing like some bullshit, you know, uh, detective psychological thriller thing where he gives us a thousand documents of information and there's three that are semi-real. Piece the mystery together, <laughs> idiots. Like that's that's what it is. Yeah, he's our guy. I enjoyed his, him on and got to talk to him. his I frequent him well. mentions of like how good looking he was and how he like slayed pussy in high school and like everyone would dip their napkins in milk and throw it at him and the girls couldn't get enough of that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that. Really? You... I believe that he stood in his cafeteria and let people throw food <laughs> items at him. Right, right. But do you believe the part about the good-looking class clown slaying all the high school pussies? Oh, no, that was clearly hyperbole. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was like, making fun of himself some there. Which, like, uh, making fun of yourself, like, that shows a level of, I believe you know, he was trying to convince us of like, that. Straight-up crazy person doesn't have. You don't think he was trying to convince us that that was true at that moment? No. No, no, no. No, he was he was like, playing he that was up. Like, I was in bed with this fine ass bitch and Harley called me on the phone. And to that to me that means I was in bed with a real ugly woman and uh or she was I was masturbating. Yeah, I was watching porn <laughs> yeah. at the time. Yeah. I tried to pull Maybe. it off like that moaning woman on the side was a real life girl. <laughs> yeah, he he's definitely not fully crazy. Um not even that crazy, I would say. I think Chiz is going to do a complete one eighty on his position with Shoe Nice because, and I did too. After watching the Vice thing, I was really like, man, maybe he is pretty crazy. I and then, 
as talking to him tonight showed like no he's he's really just got a lot of people manipulated no. master he's he does. crazy he's crazy i i won't say that he never has a a thought that's you know bigger than just stream of conscious right like obviously most of it is just stream of consciousness you know bouncing around here and there unable to like follow a topic for very long you ask him a question he forgets the question halfway through i don't think that was all an act but i, I will admit he's got a couple of like coherent you know, gems that he can pull up when when it's appropriate. Still, I, I thought the stand-up comedy thing was 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 good and well practiced and interesting that he he like mm -hmm. prefaced it by like, all right, so we're in Austin, Texas, right? Real country crowd, lots of cowboy hats, and I'm like, I've been to Austin. It's not like that. It's kind of a hippie town. Yeah, it's, I don't think Austin you've is been the only Austin. yeah. Austin's the only city in Texas that's not like that. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, I don't think he's ever been to Austin, Texas. But, but like, that whole bit he had where he's doing stand-up comedy and he's, like, ragging on invisible people who aren't there. Like, I was so confused by that. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell how confused we all were. If you guys are listening to this now, go back and listen to the shoe nice portion again because there are so many times that he finishes saying something and I kind of, like, look at Woody's face and I look at Kyle's face and I think to myself and I, I can see that none of us have any idea what to say or how to even process what it is we've just heard because it's just a an avalanche of misinformation that, so, that you're trying to wade through in the way to an interesting question when the dog barked and he tried to pick up sparky was there actually a dog or was he barking okay so <laughs> There was a dog outside of his house, and he made reference to that dog and made a little joke about it that wasn't funny at all. Um, but when he call, when he's saying Sparky, he's talking about his lighter. Yeah, let me feed Sparky here. What he means is he's going to smoke some pot. There was no dog in the house, though. He yeah, doesn't have a dog. No dog. He, he has no dog. That, yeah. <laughs> that was quite, I, I, He has no dog. <laughs> I didn't follow that piece like I should have at all. I, and, and it was... I. Yeah, I, there was a dog, and he's ah, oh, it's Sparky. Let me get him, and <laughs> you know. Hey, I mean, it was a stream of consciousness with that guy. You got to be pretty fucking sharp and like focused on him t the whole conversation, mm. or you get lost in the weeds. It, 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 it was hard to stay on board. Yeah, because yeah, he's you know really a little crazy and, and, and I think people manic. are gonna really like it. I think they're gonna enjoy that part. I hope so. So what else we got? Um, I heard I Uber so was bad. rolling out self-driving cars this month. I heard that too, but is it actually happening? I feel I, like I've seen an update about self-driving cars showing up for the last year. I have no idea. I like that so much better. Now, now it, so, so here's one thing. I don't like Uber because I like the professionalism of a cab driver. I like that you know, he can either go be completely silent or he can carry on a conversation, and he'll kind of take cues from me as to which are best. But like an Uber driver, I don't know what I'm getting into or what, what this person's going to be like, or what their reasons for being an Uber driver is. But it's probably not that they want to be a professional like livery driver, which is what a taxi cab driver is. So the idea of a car just showing up empty, and I get in, and like I can fart in the back, like, like all right, here we go. Got my own car here. This is perfect. That, that's, I would like that a lot. And it would be even better if you got to drive. If the Uber shows up, and you can get behind the wheel and go where you want. I heard a comedian say, you know, buy that stock right now. There's a massive untapped market for rolling hand job motels. Oh, oh, yeah, good point. That's why I stop at hand jobs. I hear you, but like... Get yourself a bang bus. Maybe too much movement would throw off the, the gyro scope <laughs> or whatever is controlling the <laughs> lanes, maybe. Maybe.